Chapter Eight of But Thy Love and Thy Grace by Francis J. Finn, S. J. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. Chapter Eight. Mr. Fairweather, seated at his desk in the library of his house, was not a little astonished when the maid informed him that a young lady wished to see him. One moment, he said, and finished the letter he was writing. Now, please show her in he resumed. Suppressing his surprise, when Regina O'Connell entered, he arose and greeted her cordially. "'You are welcome,' he said with his engaging smile. "'You must excuse me, sir, for coming at such an hour of the night, but I thought I ought to come. Sir, I want to sell that diamond ring at once. I have need for the money.' Regina had no intention of telling him for what purpose the money was needed but yielding gradually to the kind manner of the old gentleman she told the whole story miss o'connell he said i will buy the ring and pay for it too on two conditions yes sir said regina interrogatively the first is that you keep three-fourths of the money for yourself regina was about to object now listen the second is that you allow me to help you in this work of real charity Oh, thank you, sir. I shall never forget your kindness. Mr. Fairweather pressed an electric button. Get the carriage at once, he said to the answering maid. I will see to the doctor, he went on, and that other boy shall have work within a week. If I have to create a job for him. And now, he added, taking out a pocket book, I think I can pay you in cash. Ah, yes, he went on, as he passed a number of bills through his fingers. Here we are, five twenties. That's all right, isn't it? It did not occur to Regina in her excitement that five twenties were equal to one hundred dollars. Yes, sir, I'm sure it is all right. Very good. Give one of those twenties to Mrs. Stevens, my dear young lady, and keep the rest for yourself against a rainy day. Thank you, sir. You are so good. I hope I have not disturbed you. Not at all, not at all. And now be seated for a moment and excuse me while I go to the telephone. I shall come back presently. He was gone for several minutes. When he returned, he said, My doctor will visit the sick boy at once. And now, my dear young lady, you look very pale and tired. Is there anything I could offer you? A cup of coffee or... or... No, thank you, sir. I am not used to taking anything at night. The carriage is ready, sir, announced the maid. Very good. Miss O'Connell, it is late for you to be out alone. You must go home in my carriage. Regina could say nothing. Goodbye, he said a moment later, as he helped her into the carriage. I am very glad to have met you indeed. Please to pray for an old sinner. It was Regina's first carriage ride. End of chapter 8